Now I was, browsing AMD hate threads on Reddit, just having a jolly old time as all PC gamers do. You must be dumb if you buy AMD, right? And then I got a package and I realized really quickly that I got a bomb. Okay, I got sent a bomb in the mail. Is dumb enough to plug this thing into my computer. I, I know my cable management under my desk is bad, but it's not gonna matter when everything blows up anyway. Okay, so it's like in the slot. Okay. Uh, I'll have to look. It's in. I blow up the courage. Okay, one second. Power button to the computer. Three, two, one. Are we okay? I guess I was delightfully surprised when it didn't explode. And given that experience, I've been with an AMD GPU for five days. Here is my experience. Now I did pay for this GPU out of my own pocket, the RX 6700. From everything that the internet has said and made me believe, like many wouldn't wish their worst enemy to use AMD drivers. But if you gave me a blind test and I didn't know that it was an AMD or an NVIDIA GPU in whatever computer I was using. Would it be surprising if I said that I couldn't tell the difference between the two? And that's how it should be. Things should just work. And with the AMD driver experience, I've been really impressed. As you can see, I still have all my hair and I haven't pulled it all out because of crashes or blue screens or anything like that. It's all been going smooth. I've been booting up games, no hitches whatsoever. Everything runs as it should. And in fact, with the whole software suite integrated into the games that we're gonna get a little bit more in depth with in just a second, it's been at least on par or better than Nvidia's experience. I also use my GPU for more than just gaming. I also use it to record and edit videos. And for that process, it's also gone super smooth. A couple videos you guys have already seen have been recorded on the 6700. Now, I don't wanna just call everybody out for ignorance here, but I do think that people are probably ignorant. When, when people complain about AMD driver problems and it's just crashing all the time, bugging out, I think it typically is because they didn't install their drivers properly. And to install graphics drivers properly, that means you have to uninstall your old ones or else it's gonna conflict with your old drivers. They use a software called DDU, which literally stands for Display Driver Uninstaller. And you install your new drivers. Then you probably won't have any problems whatsoever. And that's how it's been for my case. I'll leave a link to a tutorial by Ancient Gameplays on how to use DDU. If you're having problems with your drivers, it might be useful to uninstall them and reinstall new ones. But this software experience, let's talk about AMD software. Now on the home screen, just right click. You can get to AMD Adrenaline Edition. And here we are. This is the dashboard that you're welcomed with. It shows you what driver version you're on and if you need to update your drivers. It shows recent games that you played and it tracks average FPS in your play session, which is pretty interesting. And you can see the recording aspect of the software. Then you can move along and you have other tabs. You have a gaming tab. It shows all the games on your computer among us. Advanced graphics settings, which is where you can get into a lot of the really cool features that this software has. Also the recording and streaming tab. You can set up scenes. So you can set up like, hey, I have a camera in the corner. I have a stream indicator. You can even put chat on your screen if you were to stream. Way more settings than NVIDIA's GeForce Experience allows you to set up for recording. Yes, you could just use OBS, but this is a really good start for a lot of people and I appreciate them doing well with it. The last tab, which is super sick, is the performance tab. And you can do a little performance overlay that comes up in the top left corner, which you can customize unlike uh, NVIDIA's GeForce Experience one. I have to throw in the comparisons here because it's important to note. The real star of this show is the tuning tab. Not only can you adjust the core and the VRAM, but you can also adjust the fan speed. You can set up a fan curve right in the driver software from AMD. This software is really powerful. And I would actually say that its biggest detriment is it's too powerful. That isn't the only software experience. Once you get in game, you can do a little bit more. Here we're in Overwatch 2. You can open up that same software that we had there. So you could adjust all of your timings and stuff for your GPU here. You can just set that up to a hotkey, make it whatever you want. But the real cream of the crop is awesome. I set this to another hotkey and this is a per 
game basis kind of thing. This gives you basically that same overlay, but in a more condensed form onto the side of your screen. And you can click right here and say adjust game settings. Something really sick that you get is Fidelity FX super resolution at the driver level. So instead of a game having to have FSR in it, you can enable this that if you just set your resolution lower in game, it will upscale it to whatever your native resolution is. This is really similar to NIS, which is native image scaling on NVIDIA's side. This is a lot more of a streamlined way to put this into your games and make it more fluid for the end user instead of going to NVIDIA's control panel. Now, I typically have this off because this GPU is fast enough. They also get a thing called Radeon Anti-Lag. Try to bring down latency for your system. Also get features like Radeon Chill, Radeon Boost, and Radeon Image Sharpening. Now this one's pretty sick. It's at 100% and that's it. Off. 100% off. I think it works great. Okay. And I think a lot of people actually will like. And I just really talked up AMD's software experience. So I have to tell you what you're missing out on if you're going AMD. Because it's not all sunshine and rainbows, all right? And one of them is NVIDIA Reflex. So you do miss out on that with AMD because their version of Reflex is called AMD Anti-Lag. It just isn't as good as NVIDIA Reflex. If you're really after the cutting edge response times, then maybe you need NVIDIA, but on the left here, Reflex is off, and then on the right, Reflex is on. You can see that there is a little bit of a difference with the system latency on the bottom. In my opinion, in a competitive game, even though you do want as little latency as possible, unfortunately, I don't think anyone can notice a millisecond. I'd also like to note that it does impact the performance in the top, if you notice that as well. Now you are missing out on deep learning super sampling, by NVIDIA, which is DLSS. Now, most people do consider DLSS to be better than AMD's alternative FSR, especially when you get down to the lower upscaling resolutions, like on DLSS performance mode, it looks better than FSR performance mode. And I can agree with that. I, I think DLSS does look better, but most of the time, a 1080p with at least this card that I'm testing here, you don't need image scaling. At 1440p, FSR quality still looks awesome okay and if you're at 4k fsr quality would just look even better all right so i don't really think it's a big deal in the grand scheme of things most people couldn't tell the difference anyways another thing is ray tracing you just don't get as good of ray tracing performance on amd cards so you take way more of a performance hit turning on rt on the 6700 and you would proportionally on a 3080 or something like that honestly most people don't use ray tracing i know it's a cool feature and it's cool to like test out the graphics and stuff like that. But most people, including me, end up turning it off. Yeah, but all I have to say is that one of the encoders for AMD, the H.264 encoder, is not as good as NVIDIA's counterpart. It is what it is, but to me, it doesn't even matter because I don't use that encoder anyways. I use H.265 and H.265 on both GPUs are pretty much the same. Also, a couple more AMD downsides are the CUDA acceleration in creative apps. Now, I don't personally have problems with this because my card has the decoders and encoders for the footage that I work with, which is pretty much all I do productivity wise with this card. But some people might need CUDA acceleration for different modeling programs or Blender or something like that. But depending on what you do, AMD literally might not be an option. And that especially comes with AI performance, AI acceleration. I know a lot of people are doing that in their, their spare time using like stable diffusion or something like that. AMD just doesn't really support that software that well. Now I will say that AMD is starting to integrate their version of CUDA acceleration into apps and stuff. And then it's called Rock M, R-O-C-M. Allows these apps to access AMD's cores for their full productivity performance. And it's starting to get pretty good over time. But yeah, these are downsides. They're compromise you have to make by getting an AMD GPU. But you know AMD's main advantage is its price. AMD's cards are pretty much universally recommended as the best value cards on the new market. And All three of these GPUs are a much better deal than the RTX 3050. I'm specifically saying new market because the used market's pretty competitive nowadays. But if you want to get a new GPU, AMD 6000 series is awesome. Let's talk about this card right here, the 6700 the non XT one that there aren't that many videos out there. And I doubt that many people on planet earth even own these things. I was able to pick up this bargain of a deal for $280. Plus it came with last of us part one, which is a $60 game. So it's debatable whether or not you want to include that in the price. But if you do include the game, then that GPU was only $220. Wow. 
that is a just like wow it sits around about a 3060 ti about a five percent difference there and you get 10 gigabytes of vram on this card 3060 ti at least on the new market around 400 dollars. the 6700 does beat this card but with all that said let's hop into some games and check out how this rx 6700 non-xt performs and i think you're going to be pretty impressed so a lot of people compare the 6700 non-xt to the ps5's gpu because they are very similar spec wise so expect a lot of this performance to be similar to what a ps5 is obviously i'm showing fortnite here first at 1440p completely maxed out obviously the fps isn't that good it's at like 30 so if you drop the resolution scale to quality you can get like around 50 to 60 fps which is decently playable and i'm obviously aware that these aren't settings that you would play Fortnite at. Realistically, it's a competitive game, but it is using Unreal Engine 5, and a lot of games that are going to be coming out in a few years are going to be using Unreal Engine 5. So this is a good idea of how those are gonna perform. As an idea of how I would realistically play the game, I like some visuals in a game, so I turn the settings up to high, and if you turn the resolution scale to quality, then you get some pretty nice FPS on this GPU. You can also do the performance API and get an absolutely unfathomable amount of FPS. So, you know, take it as you will. It's a competitive game. Let's move on to the next one. So Last of Us, the game that came with this GPU and the game that also caused a lot of controversy in the PC gaming community for how much VRAM it uses. I did have to tinker with settings on this a little bit earlier on in the game. Uh, it actually presetted me on to have ray tracing on and everything, and it honestly performed pretty well. I ended up turning ray tracing off because even though the game could run at 60 FPS with ray tracing on, you know, it's the difference of having it off of running at 60 versus running at 80. So I like how 80 FPS feels, and I don't see that in this game with only ray trace reflections in it that it made that much of a difference. So I just turned it off. And I think many of you probably would too. So Last of Us on the 6700, playable at 1440p with FSR quality. Let's go to the next game. Checking out one of my personal favorites and that is Overwatch 2, another mainly competitive game, especially knowing that we aren't getting PVE anymore. Okay, um, let's move on though. But this is high settings on the RX 6700 non-XT 1440p native. Overwatch has always been pretty easy to run. Nothing crazy here. A lot of people would turn down the settings more than I would. I like my visuals to look pretty nice. Something I do want to point out is look how little power the GPU is drawing in the top left. It's drawing around 150 watts for the performance that we're getting. It's impressive and it's quite power efficient and you can undervolt this a little bit as I talked about earlier with the Radeon software. Now I did try this with anti-lag on and off. I couldn't tell the difference personally. Uh, there was a slight performance hit using Radeon anti-lag. This is a very good competitive game GPU, really nothing to complain about here. I've been using this consistently as I've had it for the past week now, actually. So let's move on to the next game. This is Dishonored 2. It's using the Void engine, the completely unique engine made by Arcane Studios. This is an older game. To give you an idea of how this will perform from, for games that were out, this is like 2017, I'm pretty sure. And you can see settings, FPS are great. And uh, really nothing to complain about. This is 1440p native, high settings. I did test it at ultra, but I was getting bad 1% low performance, but the average FPS was still good. So I ended up turning it down to high. It really visually didn't look that different. Let's move on to our last example. That is Forspoken, everybody's favorite game to hate. For this one, I'm using the demo of the game, so just keep that in mind. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not gonna buy the game. So 1440p FSR quality, at standard settings. I, I found that this can get us close to 60 FPS. It's not perfect. Didn't feel like the smoothest gameplay in the world. And as our last game to end it off here, if it's like a big triple A game, it seems like this card is probably more of a 1080p card because at anything at 1080p, this card would pretty much destroy because we had to almost turn on FSR quality, which is basically rendering at 1080p resolution for every game that we use that is more graphically demanding. If you're playing at 1080p especially, this card is going to crush it, but it's definitely capable at 1440p, especially if you're playing like older games, say like Dishonored as I showed you, or if you're playing competitive games where it's not that graphically demanding, all things considered. I did just want to reiterate too, throughout the course of playing games and everything testing this week, I didn't experience any crashes or hitches while I was playing. 
probably the most annoying thing that I had to go through was compiling shaders in Last of Us because that took like 15, 20 minutes, but, but that's just Last of Us for you. Other than that, like AMD support, drivers, technology has all been working flawlessly. Really no complaints. So for a total of $280, the build quality was pretty good. And they use high quality plastics and the fans look nice. It has a pretty nice design, all things considered. I'm, I'm happy with that. But design isn't all that matters because the card did run really cool and quiet. That's why I want to point out. As you can see in a lot of the games I was playing, it was probably around 70 degrees. You're like, oh, that's not like incredible or anything. But also the fan speed was only at 30%. This car was chilling. Cooler was probably overbuilt for the 6700 and that just gets me even more excited about it. It's really cool. I was super excited to test Sapphire because we did rank Sapphire up really high on the AIB cards tier list. I mean, like it wasn't as good as Yestin, but we did put Sapphire in the S tier. Now on a side note, the box wasn't anything fancy. Okay, it was just, just a cheap box, but at this price point, like, I don't expect this extreme unboxing experience. In fact, if there was a crazy box, I would be more concerned that they wasted money on a stupid box than making the card more high quality. Only a negative thing that I really saw about the Sapphire Pulse card was the GPU sag. It was kind of disappointing. I don't know what else you'd expect when there isn't any metal on the card to keep it more stable. First impressions of Sapphire ever for me, really good. Okay, this card performs great. I highly recommend the Sapphire pulse model. So we learned a lot today. All right, got AMD for the first time, always had Nvidia for my entire PC gaming life. I've been thoroughly impressed with AMD. So much so that if you install your drivers properly, especially following that link I put in the description for DDU, you'll be really happy with this thing. There isn't really that much to complain about. This card is extremely good value and I've had a really good experience with it so far. Now I'm debating whether or not I want to put my RTX 3080 back in my computer because I really do appreciate how little power the 6700 draws. Like it, it just makes me feel a little bit better. Whereas this monster 6700 is just like a champion in comparison for its efficiency. So have I been switched? I don't know. I've had a pretty good experience with AMD. And what GPU should I try next? I'm kind of thinking Intel, by the way. There's tons of GPUs I can try out there. And this has been a really fun experience trying out AMD for the first time. And I think the rumors are false. Myth busted. Have a good one. See you in the comments. I'll be Peace. Without you.